ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد Verily all praise and thanks belong unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Allah, we ask for his help, aid and assistance and we ask for his forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our bad deeds, from the bad consequences and evil ramifications of our bad deeds. He who Allah guides, there is none who can lead them astray. and the one who Allah leads astray then there is none who can guide them i publicly testify and bear witness that nothing has the right to be worshiped in truth except Allah alone without any partners and i publicly testify and bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is his slave and messenger o you who believe fear Allah as he should be feared and do not die except that you are muslim O humanity, O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul, and who created from that soul its mate, and who made from them too many men and women, and fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights, and do not cut off relations with the wombs that bore you, do not cut off family ties. Verily Allah is an ever watcher over you. O you who believe fear Allah and say a word that is straightforward truthful and direct if you do this Allah will rectify for you your deeds your affairs and he will forgive you for your sins and he who has obeyed Allah and his messenger has already indeed achieved a great achievement as to what follows indeed the most truthful speech is the book of Allah and the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the worst of all affairs are newly invented matters in the religion because every newly invented matter in the religion is a bid'a is an innovation every innovation is a going astray and every going astray is in the hellfire we continue going over the tremendous letter that Imam Ibn Qayyim he wrote to one of his brothers in the deen um and we are still on the introduction where Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala he made a tremendous dua for his brother so we still want to look and extract some benefits that we find here in this dua because it is rich with a lot of benefits with a lot of jewels a lot of pearls a lot of diamonds so on and so forth and that which is in reality more precious than those aforementioned things Imam Ibn Qayyim he said Allahu al-mas'ul al-marju al-ijaba that Allah is the one who we ask and Allah is the one who we hope would would answer this yani supplication and yuhsina ila al-akh ala ad-din that he is good to the brother ala ala ad-din 
fid dunya wal akhirah that is good to him in this world and in the next wa yanfa' bihi and that he bene- makes him a benefit and that he benefits yani by way of him wa yaj'aluhu mubarakan ayna ma kana that he makes him blessed wherever he may be from the benefits that we extract from this tremendous dua is as the fadil to shaykh shaykh sulaiman ar-ruhayni he mentions he says wa hadha ad-dua ma'a ma fihi min ar-rifq wa tahabbub wa talattuf ila al-akh fihi aydan raf'u li himmati al-mansuh hatta yas'a li an yakuna min ahl hadha ad-dua he said that this dua even what it contains or in addition and coupled in what it contains in it from gentleness from love and affection for his brother it also has in there there is also present in this dua the raising of the attention of the one being advised so that they may adorn themselves with the necessary characteristics and traits so that they can be from the people mentioned here in this supplication meaning so that they can be from those who fit the bill as they say for lack of a better term as relates to who is exactly being spoken about in this supplication and this is something that is tremendous that we need to reflect on and this was from the understanding of the people of the past as um the sheikh goes on to mention he says ni an al qaida and the salaf he said because the principle with the salaf tasdiq al dua bi badl asbab the principle with the salaf is that they would oblige themselves or they will be truthful by obliging themselves as relates to the dua to adorn themselves the necessary steps to attain whatever it is that they are asking for in the supplication naam so again is that one is obliged to be truthful in his dua and how are we truthful in our dua we're truthful in our dua by adorning ourselves and taking the necessary steps that are needed to attain that in which we are asking for okay so this is a benefit that jumps out at us right here already one it points to a mentality and a mind state and that mind state is that they understood that if you're going to ask for a certain thing then you have to put forth the effort in the attainment of said thing now it's very important for us to understand it is not just a hope pie in the sky as they say type of mentality that you just ask for things and then you sit on your hands no but they will ask and then they will get to work and this is the the point here and the and the takeaway that we want each and every one of us to walk away with is that we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we have to get to work and do our part it is incumbent and it is a must that we attack life like this that we beg Allah hu ta'ala that's first we beg Allah hu ta'ala na'am and begging Allah Ta'ala it is first it is in the middle and it is in the end all throughout the affair we are begging Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala so we beg Allah Ta'ala na'am and then we get to work and then we get to work na'am so ask and then get to work ala kulli hal we have to take the means okay fa salaf rahimahumullah so the salaf may Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon them يَدْعُوا وَيَفْعَلُوا They used to ask and they used to do. They used to ask and they used to get to work. Okay? So if a person, for example, let's bring this down to practically. And I believe we have used this example before in the past. If a person wants to get a job and they want to find good employment, then they have to start by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they have to take those necessary steps in the attainment of finding of a job so that means they have to go to those job boards they have to go to the ads to see who is hiring 
And once they have seen who was hiring, they have to do their due diligence to research that company, to look through the position, to look at the job description, to see whether or not that they fit the uh, the necessary skills required for this particular position. And once they saw that they have the skills necessary for this position, then they have to contact the employer. They have to have a resume. They have to have a cover letter. They have to fill out an application. They have to go through the interview process, so on and so forth. Now, in order to what? In order to get a job, they have to take the necessary steps. Likewise, we want to bring another example with the lahi ta'ala so that um, we further highlight and reiterate this concept. Now, Another example would be, for example, if a person is suffering from an addiction, a person is suffering from a vice, a person, they, they just won't say, oh Allah, cure me from the addiction of alcohol. Now, cure me from the addiction of alcohol. Or, oh Allah, save me from being an alcoholic. A person won't just make that dua and then sit around in the bar. A person will make that dua while they go to the store to buy some alcohol. But they will make that dua and have to take the necessary means and steps by pouring out the alcohol, by discarding the uh, the bottles and that which may be remind them, remind them of the alcohol, by staying away from the people who they used to drink with, by avoiding those places where they used to drink, by even avoiding being alone, Na'am, because it might be more of a temptation when they are by themselves, so on and so forth. They have to take the, the necessary means and the steps. And that means they have to get into a rehab program. Then they'll get into a rehab program and go through that program and that which is required in that program so that they may get clean and get away from the alcohol. And likewise, if, they, if that was drugs or whatever the case is, then they will have to go and take the necessary steps if that means counseling then they will have to sit with the counselors and so on and so forth to get over this addiction so you can't just say oh Allah cure me from this addiction and then you don't take any steps you don't you don't uh, take any of the necessary means to escape that addiction person won't, won't for another example say oh Allah save me from the fitna of the opposite sex and then expose themselves to the opposite sex now, talking, flirting, whatever the case is, going in their presence of or where they know they are, and, 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 and. No, but they have to take the necessary means. So they have to avoid that fitna. They have to avoid that which leads to that fitna, so on and so forth. So it is important that we understand this reality and we understand this principle is that whenever we make dua for something, then we have to take the necessary means for the attainment of said thing. Another example will be if a person says, Oh Allah, make me a hafiz of Quran. Now, they can't just make this dua and then they sit on their hands and they never pick up the mushaf. They never go to the classes uh, where the Quran is taught and memorized. They never go there. Now, they never sit with the mashayikh who, yani, you know, who people memorize with them the Quran and sit and memorize the Quran. They don't put forth any effort, but yet at the same time they're saying, "Oh Allah, make me a half of Quran." This is obviously a person who is not being truthful in his du'a. He's asking for something. He's saying something with his mouth, but then his limbs are screaming the opposite. Naam. So we have to be truthful in our du'a. So when we ask, and how are we truthful in our du'a? When we ask for something, then we take the necessary steps and means in the attainment of said thing. This is how we are truthful in our dua. So the Salaf, they used to يدعو ويفعلو. They used to ask and they used to do. The Shaykh he says, وَسَيَأْتِي إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى And inshallah they will come. Yani the Shaykh he says, وَسَيَأْتِي إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهُ إِشَارَ إِلَى الْهَابَى And they'll come some, uh, you know, we'll point to this. They'll come some things that are indicating uh, to this. إِنشَاءَ اللَّهُ فَلَا يَدْعُونَ so they didn't used to make dua and then sever the means. But they used to make dua and then they used to work. They used to work 
and then they used to do what they were able to do from taking the means. Naam. ففي هذا الدعاء رفع لهمة على الدين ليكون من أهل الخير. So in this dua, it raises the attention of ala din so so that he has to be from the good. Yani he raises attention that he must be from the people of good. He must be from the people of good himself. Wa yas'a li an yanshur al khayr. And then he, he, he himself has to be very diligent and work hard in the dissemination of good. Hatta yakuna min ahli al hadha dua. So he may be from the people mentioned here in this dua. Because the people in this dua, right? They are the people who, they are good themselves. And they are people who are sources of good and they call others to good. So they are good themselves and they spread good. They are sources of good. Naam? And this is what it means to be blessed wherever you are. So at no, meaning, wherever you are, you are a source of good and you are a spreader of good. You're good and you spread good. You're good and you spread good. This is what it means to be blessed wherever you are. Because if you're good and you spread good, then it doesn't matter where you are, what continent that you are in, what country you are in, what city, town, state, or province you are in, you will be good and a source of good. Naam. And this is um, an important point that the Sheikh is mentioning Naam, for al din So in that, the benefit, the takeaway is that we we have to be truthful in our dua and we are truthful in our dua by asking and then taking the necessary means in the attainment of that in which we have asked for fa as allah ta'ala ay yuwaffiqni wa iyyakum lima yuhibbuhu wa yarda wa an yaj'alna min man idha u'tiya shakar wa dhubtuliya sabar wa idha athnaba astaghfar fa inna haula'i thalath unwan as-sa'ada هذا إلى اللقاء استودعكم الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته